Hello and welcome back to another video and in this one we'll be making this uh, sort of transition effect and we'll be using um, SVGs created in Inkscape but you won't have to create them yourself. I'll provide uh, links where you can download uh, some you can use and uh, without further ado let's just get into the video. So we'll be exploiting the, tran the transparent shader to create this effect and this is what we'll be trying to achieve basically. Uh, in this scene I have two simple shapes, a circle and a square. And I'll set up a, a simple material um, where I'll mix the principal shader and the transparent shader. And the factor that mixes between the two, I'll use the back facing from the geometry, um, geometry node so that one face will have the principal shader and the opposite uh, side will have the transparent shader. Under the material settings, I'll set the blend mode to alpha blend and that will just enable the transparency to work in the viewport. So now if you look at the shapes, on one end you'll see the principal shader with the color that we set and on the other side, the shapes are completely invisible. So that's the idea we want to use. So with that setup, I'll select one of the shapes and duplicate that material and then just flip the inputs in the mix shader. And that will make it so that when we now rotate around the two objects, on one side you'll see that it's a circle and on the opposite side you'll see that it's uh, the square. So that's just the idea that we're going to use to have, uh, say, the cheetah transform into the, the leopard on now a collection of these small objects and shapes. So in this scene I have the the SVGs for the leopard and the cheetah imported inside Blender and I have them uh, scaled to just about the same size and overlapping each other. They also have uh, the same material and by the way when you import them from Inkscape you want to have them as a solid object uh, as you import them into Blender because if they're separate, if they're all separate objects, you will have them, e each of them will come with their own separate material and because there are so many objects, you'll have like a mess of several materials that you won't be using. So you want them to be one solid object so that when you import them, they will come with just um, a small number of materials. Now, how you choose to animate this transition between these two shapes is really up to your imagination but I'll just go over how you could do it using constraints and using the add-on animation nodes. And another reason why it's, it really helps to import the vectors as one solid object at first is because it's much easier to add constraints on, on them as one object and when you separate them into different objects, they'll all carry that uh, constraint that was created when they were one solid object. So I'll select the, um, the leopard and hide the cheetah collection. And then I'll add the copy rotation constraint and just set it to affect the rotation on the y-axis. And then I'll select the, the object and convert it to a mesh. And then merge the vertices by distance just to reduce the number of um, extra vertices that are not needed in the object. I'll then highlight everything inside edit mode and then hit P and select separate by loose parts. That will just separate all the tiny different parts into their own separate objects. And then uh, in object mode, I'll set the origin of all the different parts to their center of mass. And then when you now rotate the, the empty that we, we are using as the controller for the rotation in the, in the constraints, all the different part, tiny parts will be rotating about each individual center of mass. I'll repeat the same process uh, that we did on the leopard on this collection of the cheetah, with the only difference being that the shapes that form the cheetah are initially flipped, so that as you rotate and the leopard disappears, the shapes of the cheetah are now going to form with the right side facing the camera. I can now then uh, duplicate the material for the cheetah so that it will be a separate material and just flip the inputs in the mix shader. And now as you rotate the controlling empty, you'll see one, one shape disappear 
and um, as the other one appears. Now that's fine and all, and what we what we've set up is working. But if you wanted to have more control, um, animation nodes is an add-on that will really give you that a lot more control of how you want that transition to occur. And uh, uh, personally, I'm no expert in animation nodes myself. In fact, I try to avoid using it as much as possible. Um, so I'll, uh, I'd like to refer you to this video by um, Wired Soul Studio, which really helped me to get this setup working. And uh, I'll leave a link down in the description or so you can see uh, how I set up um, this node tree that uh, where this uh, empty controller controls the transition between the two objects as you rotate. Um, so really that's just only two ways of how you could um, animate a, a trans a, this kind of transition. Um, I bet there are endless number of ways you could do it. So just play around and see what you could discover. So I'll leave a link in the description of where you could download uh, the project files and check out um, the setup. And also, you can also buy this collection of all these sorts of um, vector prints that you can use. Um, you can buy them on Gumroad or you can become a Patreon and get them also on Patreon. Which actually turns out they actually make really nice looking uh, prints that I like. So um, yeah, that's it for this video. Um, I'll see you in the next one.